Good afternoon and welcome to our Youth Mass. Today we are celebrating the third Sunday in Lent. Our worship aid can be found on our Facebook page, our website, or you can scan the QR code as shown on the church doors. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Jerry, assisted by Deacon Tom. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, with your spirit. And good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome all of you here in worship in our beautiful church, and all of you viewing and watching this Mass, praying with us on the live stream. My friends, this is a uh, being the first Sunday of the month, we have at the 12 noon Mass our Youth Mass. So we welcome all of our youth here with us and via the live stream. We uh, pray for all of our young people. And we're so happy and so privileged here at St. Philomena to have such a really a vibrant and a wonderful youth ministry program. And we thank so much Sister Nikki uh, for all she does for the youth. Um, to be young again, right? <laughs> but it's, uh, it's good to be with you. And we offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass for the youth of our parish. Let us now first acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loveliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. 
You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not blow, you shall not bow down before them and worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, and inflicting punishment for those fathers' wickedness on the children of those who hate me. Down to the third and the fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down on thousands, on the thousands, Thousands de- generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall, you shall not take the name the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not let leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do your all your work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done, then either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother, that you may not that you may have a long life in the land which your Lord, your God, is giving you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, and you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, or his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, 
but to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up on three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had, that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the words Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all, and he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My friends, we're already at about the halfway mark of this season of Lent. Yeah, just three Sundays from now, we'll be celebrating Palm Sunday. Time moves along. Our scripture readings today are intended, I think, as we near the center of Lent, to center each one of us. You know, that Old Testament reading from uh, Exodus that Gabe proclaimed to us, it lists the Ten Commandments, right? Those commandments uh, given right to that man, Moses, but given to the people of God. And we hopefully we think through these commandments on a daily basis that we want to follow and, uh, and oblige them. So we have those Ten Commandments, and then in the Gospel reading, Jesus gives us that account of his cleansing of the temple. That is really a moment when Christ literally upsets 
the old order, kind of the old way of doing things. But the readings do a good job of reminding us the reason of this wonderful privileged season of Lent. And I think we find that reason, the guiding force that really animates everything we do, it is in that very first commandment that we heard in that first reading. This is the commandment, I would argue, is the one commandment. The one commandment, I think, my friends, I would argue with you, <laughs> is the commandment that we break again and again without perhaps even realizing that we are breaking it. Right? I, the Lord, am your God. Right? As it tells us, the God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, and God is telling us, you shall not have other gods besides me. We have, right, my friends, we have one God, one holy, almighty God, the only God who has power over us. He is the only God that has power over us. So, right, we're not to worship any other gods, maybe with that little g. We're not to worship any false gods, like that of the early Israelites, right? When they kind of fed up with God, where are you? Made that golden calf and worshiped that object as their God. But that, of course, is a false god. Or we can look at the gospel, the money changers in that great temple there in Jerusalem, right? The, those in the temple who had their own gods as well, the money changers, they infuriated Jesus Christ. They drove him to what I will say in a few minutes, that righteous anger, and by right he should be angry, but their idols were money, were wealth, and greed. Those were the gods of those people, the money changers. But these are some of the false gods, so many of them, my dear friends, in our life, right? Other gods in the world, maybe they're a little less obvious to us, but I think this reading is a good, you know, the first reading with the gospel, it's good to think about those maybe less obvious false gods in our life. So as we approach this middle of the Lenten journey, it is worth asking ourselves if there are gods in our lives that we need to turn away from. Like the God, yes, of any kind of addiction. All right, this is a youth mass, but it's not just the youth. What about the addiction to that internet, or the addiction to the cell phone, of which I'm very guilty. I mean, how many times can I check the score of a game? It's not going to change that quickly, but I go to it, though. So the addiction to whatever it might be, but I, I pick on the internet and the social media and all of that that we can be so addicted to. What about the God of selfish ambition? The God of egotism? It all begins right here and ends here. The big ego that we can get. Or what about the God of bigotry? The God of bigotry. The God of self-doubt and fear self-doubt and fear. Okay, God, we fear God. Not in the sense I'm afraid of him, but I know that he's all-powerful. Well, what about the fear of other things? I can be very fearful of many things, but that is a false God for me. The one God can override that fear if only I would let him do that more so. If only I would have greater trust in him. 
So yeah, the God of fear, the God of all the worries and anxiety that we might have. What about the God that we can have of mediocrity or dishonesty or hypocrisy? Those are false gods as well that we can kind of live our daily life with. What about the God, as we see in today's gospel passage, the God of anger? How many of us maybe are in anger a lot of times? We're just an angry person at times, a false kind of God. The question I ask the youth, but all of us, my dear friends, what is it that makes us angry? What is it that makes us angry? We can probably think of a good many things, but what is it that makes us angry? And is the anger righteous? You know, and we can have that righteous anger. Something bad done to an innocent person, or even, God forbid, someone being executed who's been innocent. We can be righteously angry about that. What about unrighteous anger? That maybe is where our anger falls most of the time. Unrighteously angry. Jesus is angry in today's gospel. You know, the whips and the cleansing of the temple, get out of my father's house. Jesus, so much zeal and love for this worship space, the temple. But here it's a marketplace and all the other stuff you're doing, all of your false gods. So he's angry in a righteous way. That is righteous anger. But why is he angry in a righteous way? Because the two things foremost on the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ is to always, and for us as well, always to give glory and praise to his Father. What's going on in the marketplace is not giving glory and praise to his Father. That's going against that. So Jesus is rightfully and righteously angry. That's one thing foremost on his mind. Another thing, the welfare of his people. This is a place to pray and to worship and come to God. But you're taking that space away from my people. So that's why Christ is so angry. They're not praising his Father. And the people really can't pray when they're selling all of this whatever around them. So, my dear friends, these are kinds of the gods in our life, the false gods who can empower us only if we let them. So Lent is a very, very good time to take a long and a hard look at the stumbling blocks that haunt our lives. All of the small gods that loom so large in our lives. Now, very beautifully today, here in this Mass, as we uh, come together with our youth and all of our wonderful people, that the youth will continue a reflection on kind of what's broken in me. What is it about me that's broken, like a, a vase or something that I shatter? What's broken? What's fallen away from me that may be, you know, something godly and that I need to get back? So the youth will certainly reflect on that, not just for the young people, but it's so good that Thank you, Deacon Mike, Sister Nikki, for, you know, bringing this to the attention of the young people, that we can be broken. You know, when we're young, we might think we're in some way invincible, that I'm not broken, I'm all, and this is who I am. But it's good to think about how can I put things back together? And I think that's a great point of Lent. You know, how can I get back to where I, I was? I've, I've been broken over these years. And with the grace and help of God and with the beautiful ministers and the youth helping one another um, to put ourselves together. Now, of course, we've got our wonderful youth here lecturing and serving at the Mass. 
and all, the youth, all that the youth do. Um, but we've got a lot of kids out there that might be a bit more lost. And so we want to be the good witness to them to help put their lives back together. Let's make the best of Lent, my dear friends, and let's, in a sense, cleanse our own temple, right? The body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's cleanse our own temple as Jesus would want us to be. That is, get out of me anything that goes against the ways of God. So cleanse ourselves as well. Um, you know, Lent ends, you know, on Holy Thursday evening. That will be April 1st this year. That's 26 days from now. Um, let's make the best of every one of those 26 days. Reflect on the commandments. Reflect on what I need to cleanse in my own body, my own world, whatever, in my family, at my workplace. Um, and I think if we do that, what a great Lent we will have to kind of maybe fix the brokenness and to come back together. Because, you know, your reflection, my dear young people, right? Brokenness and strength. Come back together. Let me be strong for you, uh, almighty God. So let's make every day matter, not just in Lent, but let keep in mind what put, what's on Jesus, the glory and praise of God, his Father always, and let's think of the welfare of one another. God bless you. Together, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now praise our loving Redeemer who gained for us this season of grace and pray for him, saying, Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that his visit with the people of Iraq will encourage and strengthen them under persecution, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from, the, from their commitment to the gospel, especially those living in countries where they cannot worship freely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of human lives from the moment of conception to natural death and for the end of end of the culture of death in our society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, especially Antoinette Dieso, and all the sick in our faith community, that they may be healed in body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
especially Suzanne James, may be cleansed from all their sins and so enter your glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth of our parish, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayers we hold deep in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have taught us to overcome our sins by prayer, fasting, and works of mercy. When we are discouraged by our weakness, give us confidence in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, just remind you, you'll see at the doors of the church, the baskets we do have at second collection today for the repairs to our parish and we thank you always for your great generosity from ashes to the living part your church must journey My dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a, a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Philomena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say word, the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, please be seated. Just uh, some announcements. Our novena to St. Joseph will begin this Thursday, March 11th at 7 p.m., Details are on the flyer in the bulletin. We will have a variety of priests leading the prayers each evening. Everyone, all of you, are invited. Also, the entire novena will be live-streamed, making your participation uh, much easier. Stations of the Cross on Friday uh, will have to be moved because of the St. Joseph Novena. So this Friday coming, March 12th, and the next Friday, March 19th, only those two Fridays, the 12th and 19th, the stations will be prayed at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, while, this, while the novena will be at 7 p.m. those evenings. We remind you that next Sunday at 12 noon Mass, it will be offered for the repose of the soul, of our dear sister Barbara Howard, uh, known by so many of you and loved by, of course, so many of you, all of us, will come together uh, that Mass 12 noon next Sunday and, and pray for Sister Barbara Howard that, and how she teaches us to share, share with one another and um, meet her one day where she is we hope to be, my friends. We continue to make progress with the annual appeal of the Archdiocese, and we thank all of you who, who have already participated. We do need wider participation in order to reach our goal, which is something that we must do. Now is the time to make a gift of any size. This will help our parish directly please take a red printed envelope from the doors or from the pews and help our parish to be successful, uh, to be second to none. All our parents are welcome to our Praying Parents Holy Hour. It will be this Tuesday evening, March 9th, from 7 o'clock to 8 p.m. here uh, in the church. Also, my friends, lectors are needed uh, for our Holy Week celebration, the liturgies of Holy Week, and there is a sign-up sheet 
uh, just behind me in the sacristy on the bulletin board. So we welcome the, those lectors who wish to sign up for those wonderful liturgies that are coming so very quick uh, during, uh, during, the, during Holy Week. It's always good to be with you and all of our friends watching in live stream. Let's uh, keep each other in prayer, but thank you, everyone. Thank you for the young people that come out for this youth mass and how beautiful. Our, our prayer is that, yeah, we pray for our youth and maybe one or two or a few of you, maybe a, a, a young man will maybe listen to God's call to the priesthood or a, a young woman listening to God's call to the consecrated religious life. So we pray for that, but we pray even more important for you that you're safe and well, and you're young. Enjoy life, right? Enjoy it and, and be happy and find things funny. Don't laugh at people, but find, find things funny. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can laugh at me, though, but uh, that's okay, though. But it's good to be with you, and we, we want you to grow up in a very, very good world and in, in a very safe world. Um, but I do want to thank uh, uh, certainly Gabe and Sunit uh, for proclaiming the word. Thank you very much for speaking the words of God, right, to all of us. And always, uh, Steve, thank you. And, and uh, Gina, thank you. But Steve, thank you, of course, the, really all the technology you do in the live streaming. So we're so very grateful for your expertise uh, in that. Um, uh, thank you, Lee, Liam and Eamon O'Neill, for serving at the altar. God bless you, and um, bless your mom, too, the principal of Aquinas, uh, Eileen. We're so grateful for our Aquinas Academy and our young people there. Uh, Deacon Tom, thank you, as always, so good for your service to, to God. My friends, I'm, I'm going to end the Mass, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I believe at the homily, that uh, the youth ministry is having a Lenten reflection today, so uh, really, I guess immediately after this Mass, they're going to head over to St. Joseph Hall for a beautiful reflection on brokenness and strength. And uh, before the final blessing of the Mass, I, I'm just going to bless, and maybe I'll walk over there as I say this. But my friends, uh, uh, we're just going to bless, uh, and I'll show you a couple of these, but all of you, I'm sure you remember and know that as we talk about brokenness and healing, we think about that beautiful gospel from the Gospel of St. Luke in chapter 8. You know, that woman who suffered for 12 years with hemorrhages, if she said to herself, if only I can touch the tassel of his cloak, that I will be healed. So in the crowd, she reached over and touched the tassel uh, on, on, of Jesus' cloak. And so Jesus even said, I felt power coming out of me, power going into the woman for healing. So we're going to uh, bless a variety of tassels, and this will carry on then with the uh, young people in the reflection today. Uh, so we've got some rather demanding or uh, very large kind of tassels, uh, and then we've got uh, a bunch of smaller ones. But we're going to bless them, and we can imagine, right, that woman and ourselves who are broken, who need some healing, to walk up to Christ and to just touch the tassel of his cloak. So I'm going to say a prayer over Blessed be your name, O Lord. You are the fountain source of every blessing, and you look with delight upon the devout practices of the faithful. Draw near, we pray, to these your servants, and especially to our young servants. We ask you to please bless these tassels, blessing them as a symbol of coming to you, of, of, of reaching for you and asking for your healing and to bring us back whole 
and not broken, this beautiful symbol of faith and devotion. Grant that they may also strive, our dear people, that they may also strive to be transformed into the likeness of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Beautiful prayer, and we wish our young people a wonderful reflection, and may our journey of Lent uh, be that kind of reflection as well. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everyone. Bless you.